Thank you. We've talked a lot about the Rager Dykes bankruptcy case, which has amounted to hundreds of pages of documents filed in federal court and more than a dozen lawsuits against Rager Dykes. But we haven't been able to talk a lot about how this has affected the customers who bought cars from Rager Dykes in the final weeks leading up to the bankruptcy until tonight with KMAX Page Peroso. When Rager Dykes filed for bankruptcy more than two months ago, nearly 900 customers who bought cars from the dealerships were caught in the middle of this huge lawsuit. Now, months later, they still don't have their titles or license and haven't been able to register their car since. If you turned on the TV, certified protection in the Rager Dykes Auto Group. Any car you want. The Rager Dykes Auto Group. Or drove down any street in Lubbock. It's likely you saw the name Rager Dykes. The first Rager Auto Mall was established in 2003. Three years later, Rick Dykes partnered with Rager. Ever since, the Rager Dykes Auto Group couldn't be stopped. Inc. Magazine ranked Rager Dykes among the top 5,000 fastest growing privately held companies in America. Both men pillars in the Lubbock community. They not only led efforts to redevelop downtown. We love Lubbock. You know, we love downtown. But donated hundreds of thousands to charities and local athletics. <laughs> In just over 15 years, they built an empire, but it all came crashing down on August 1st. The Rager Dykes Auto Group filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection today in federal court. That decision came after Ford filed a lawsuit against Rager Dykes, saying the mega car dealership defaulted on roughly $40 million, just a piece of the more than $116 million owed. Ford Motor Credit also accuses Rager Dykes of fraud. We've never had a case where we've had so many different financial institutions victimized. Now, this is probably the biggest you know, fraud case Lubbock has seen. But it's not just these mega corporations. Hundreds of customers trapped in the crossfire. They don't care about the customers. We should have been the first ones taken care of as far as I'm concerned in the bankruptcy. Many customers are without titles for cars they bought in the days or weeks before the Chapter 11 bankruptcy. I'm totally just out there on a limb. I'm making the payments, but I don't know if I'm going to get to keep it. I still don't have permanent tags on it. Susie Edwards is on her second temporary tag. I love it. It's She's just, nervous the car could be taken perfect. from her driveway at any moment. I was devastated. Everybody kept telling me that I was going to lose my car. Ordinarily, the process would look like this. A customer would go to Rager Dykes with their old car to trade in for a new one. When that deal is signed, it would then be the dealership's job to pay off the tax, titles, and license on the new car, plus any remaining lien on the old car. But those payments were stopped due to insufficient funds after Rager Dykes filed for bankruptcy, stalling the process altogether. After taking money from customers or from the banks, Rager Dykes bounced checks for millions of dollars, which included the checks for TTLs or tax titles and license. Now customers can't register their cars. There's, there's no one that's helping. There's no one that has answers. Everyone is confused as what's going on and nobody really has any guidance on what to do next. Valerie Watson is making two fixed. car payments after she traded in one car for the other, but none of those titles got transferred correctly. The total payment cost more than $1,600 a month. I had a huge knot in my throat, like what's going to happen next? Watson is a single mom struggling with what she calls a crippling unexpected bill. How am I going to afford two car payments and insurance on both of these vehicles? It was sickening to my stomach. Watson and Edwards, just two of the 900 customers affected by TTLs and trade-in liens. Rager Dykes, no longer under the control of Mr. Rager or Mr. Dykes, asked a judge to force retail lenders to pay off those TTLs plus the liens. Several lenders, including the U.S. Bank, objected. U.S. Bank said in court documents that it already gave the money for TTLs and trade-ins when they originally loaned the money and it shouldn't have to pay it twice. Other banks said the same thing. U.S. Bank accused Rager Dykes of abusing the bankruptcy system to avoid responsibility on the estimated $6.5 million in TTLs and liens. It's a huge burden, and it's something that I have to carry, and I have carried for the last 90 days. For Edwards, she says the stress affects every part of her life. You know, I can't even sleep at night for worrying about it because I don't know. And now that stress is becoming a health concern. I have stage four lung cancer. I've been fighting it since this time, since August of 2016. It is keeping it, it stable right now. 
but the one thing I don't need is stress in my life. That's what my doctor tells me constantly. The big question is when and how the TTL will be paid. Customers now left waiting for the answers. I, I keep watching all the news thinking maybe they'll let us know. Maybe they'll, the judge will say, okay, take care of your customers and then we'll do everything else we need to do. But that hasn't happened. A court date is set for October 29th. We're told involved lawyers hope to have a resolution by this time. Bart Rager and Rick Dykes were unable to make a comment on this story due to pending litigation. Rager Dykes did open a hotline to help with customers' questions and concerns. Both Edwards and Watson had meetings with representatives who said they were hoping to get them their tax titles and license by November. As of right now, the list of dealerships that filed for bankruptcy all are open, but with limited staff.